Hello Internet, this is JD here coming at you. Um, I just finished season one uh, not too long ago of The Loose Warrior. Uh, I've seen the ep I've, let me rephrase that. I've seen the season tons of times. Um, but I do, this is called Devil's uh, Warrior Recap, where I basically go over, not every battle, because I'm not going to sit here and say I'm a, I know much about fire. I know a little bit about older firearms more than comp, I mean, now ones, because I have a fascination with old old warfare, stuff like that. But I go over battles and stuff that they do, and kind of go over their inaccuracies. Um, to reiterate, this is how I do the battles whenever I visualize and kind of pick apart how I do things. First off, I think every weapon should be tested with armor. And if it's not tested with armor, I have to go by an assumption of what I think the armor can and cannot do. Um, so if they test anything against the armor, I go off of that and that's how I gauge things. Second, they don't go over the parameters of what the actual simulation does. I have it where there's 100 yards between the two, 100 yards, uh, both warriors 100 yards, they start there and they meet in the middle. Okay, they don't go over that in the game. In in that, they don't say whether it's like three miles and they get randomly put in places. They don't say terrain. They don't say any of that. So what I do, flat, open field. It's like a football field. It's a, we'll say it's a circle. We won't say it's just a field. We'll say it's a circle. Okay. Um, so that's how I put it. Um, so when a, ra a weapon says it has a range of a hundred or sixty yards, it means if you have a range of twenty yards for your longest range weapon, they can hit you within 60 yards. They can hit you 40 yards before you can touch them. So that's an advantage, okay? Um, and also, I look at every weapon and I gauge armor. Um, I also gauge um, three things when it comes to weapons that are against armor. Cutting ability, stabbing ability, or slashing ability, stabbing ability, and blunt force trauma. If you can Stat, try to if you can slash at somebody, but they have certain armor on, you can't penetrate that. However, if the weapon is weighted enough, you can still knock the person on their ass. You can still collapse the lung. You can still break their arm if they happen to hit their arm or whatever. And they have chainmail on, whatever the case may be. So all those things are factored into this. Um, so without further ado, this is episode seven of the series, but it's about it's about a handful of episodes from season one or season two. Season two, they got a little better at this. They they put more favorable matchups, so they got a lot better at this. I'm gonna go over every the battle they got right. I'm not going over any of the ones that have like severe um, modern weapons or anything like that. I'm just gonna go over the ones they got right. First one to go over is Jesse James versus Al Capone. Um, first off, I'm gonna say there's two weapons here that I completely use: there's brass knuckles and stiletto. Um, the the knife. They they really oversold that those two weapons. Those weapons are pointless. The only two weapons that Al Capone needs to worry about is his Tommy gun and his uh, pineapple bomb. Those are the only two weapons he needs to worry about. James uh, Jesse James. Um, he can get in close if he needs to. He can pistol whip. He can use his Colt revolver and he can use his rifle. He ended up winning the battle 544 to 456. I think it's a little bit more decisive than that. And here's why. The uh, Winchester rifle. Um, I have a 30-30 that's kind of like this. And it has a range of about 70 yards. Tommy gun has a range, but it's not an accurate range. It's a spray and pray. Um, and a pineapple bomb, um, it's said to be the long range weapon to counter the rifle, the Winchester rifle. I don't see the, how that is. You're not going to get close enough to shoot them. That's kind of the point I have against that. I mean, I do think they got it right on who won, but I think it would be a little bit more definitive. Because um, you're banking on the fact that Tommy Gun is going to get close enough to the Winchester rifle. Now, unless they're using the car in the simulation, um, that's the only way I think it would alter the battle. Um, but for the most part, I do think the Jesse James would win. I think it'd be a little bit more decisive because you've got to get close enough to that pineapple bomb, and it's only as effective as how far you can throw it. And you got to, these are expert marksmen. These are expert marksmen with the Winchester rifle. You can hit something from a good 100 to 150 feet. Okay, football, uh, 100 yards is 300 feet. They can't even close the distance where you're going to have a chance to shoot at them. Okay? And then when you do get close, you're talking about pinpoint accuracy with Colt revolvers. I just don't see it being that close, considering it's going to be a long-range fight before Al Capone gets anyone you're close to. So, so I do think that's right. I'm not going to go over number changes or anything like that. I'm just going to say I think it's right. Persian Immortal versus the Celt. Um, the, I will say this. I, I think that for the most part they have this right out except for one or two parts. 
Um, the bow and arrow, I think, would have a lot more kills than they have engaged. Again, you're looking at a, a weapon or an enemy that cannot shoot a certain distance or cannot has no weapon of distance. A sling. Don't know why they have so many people have this weapon. It's a sling. It's pointless. Okay. Um, I do think that the the chariot side they did not prove it in any of the tests that it can kill. Okay, they went at full speed and they hit three bodies and they, they saw that there's some damage, but there's nothing that can kill. There's no conclusive evidence that could kill. Maybe break a rib if he had gotten the right spot, but it's so low to the ground because of the because of the way it's on a wheel, so it might break your leg. It's not going to kill you. Okay, and the, and then on the Celtic Celtic side they gave the Berta, which is basically it's a it's a it's about that big. And it's got metal right here. And it's a club. It is <clears throat> brutally damaging if you get close to them. Close to anyone. <clears throat> this battle, they did test armor pretty well with this battle. Um, they tested the durability armor. I wish they had tested the armor with the spears and the um, and the burda. If anything hits, it crushes. So if it hits you in the chest, you're break it's breaking your chest. I don't care if you have armor on. That it is not going to be able to take that. It crushed the skull. It crushed the skull. It, cr it crushed like ten, 10 skulls in like three seconds. Okay, it's it's brutal. Um, long sword and the um, cigars, which is like an axe. Uh, both of those are accurate as well. I think they got those pretty accurate. Lancea is a wavy sword you throw, or a wavy spear you throw. Um, and you have a spear from the Persian Immortal. It had the most kills. I don't think it's the most effective weapon you have. You're going against a web or uh, an enemy that doesn't really have doesn't really have anything. They have a wooden shield, maybe. I mean, if you're factoring that in, sure, they have a wooden shield then. Um, so I, with that being said, and then you have actually you have a wicker shield from the Persian Immortals. So that's a factor I did not look at until right now. The Lancea uh, uh, spear would probably get a little bit more kills, but the problem with the Immortals is. You're not going to get close enough to use a lot of the, a lot of your weapons. That's why I think that they didn't have as many weapons. A lot of the Persian weapons can be used from a distance. I mean, hell, they got almost 420, 427 kills just from a distance. And that's the spear and the uh, bow and arrow. And the spear is actually um, um, paired up with a... Spear is paired up with a chariot. So you're factoring um, using that from, from a chariot as well. So I think they got this one pretty right. <coughs> I think the bird would get more kills. I think chariot side would get, would get less kills. I don't think it'd be too much. It might be like 400 to 600, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit closer, 350 to to 650, something like that. But I do think they got this one correct. Um, so the next one is the Vlad the Impaler versus Sun Tzu. This one um, just actually looked it over just to be safe. I'm gonna go ahead and go with Vlad the Impaler. Vlad the Impaler has a killage. Sword, Halliburton, which if you don't know what a, a killage sword is, is a, a long surface curved and it has a weighted at the end, so it, it has a lot of drag on a, on a slash. A Halliburton is a pole arm. It's about seven, eight feet tall. Um, it has an axe end, axe, okay, and a point, and then a jagged end, okay, a pike end. Um, and then you have a steel crossbow, and then you have a hand cannon. Looking at this battle, they also have chainmail, but it's plated to protect vital organs. Um, steel helmet, and then they also have a steel shield. Okay, and they never really tested the, anything against the shield, so we gotta take that with a grain of salt. And then when looking at Shun Tzu, they had leather laminar armor, and then they had a bronze helmet. Okay, um, <clears throat> this one I think they got pretty accurate to a degree, but I think they gave way too much credit to Sun Tzu. I mean, it's nothing against Sun Tzu. I'm, it always seems like I, I don't like the Eastern philosophy on this show, on, on of this show or whatever. But you're talking about a two thousand year difference. One has gunpowder, one doesn't. One has flaming arrows that you're assuming someone can just is going to walk into an area and you're going to be able to set on fire. It's a one on one battle or a five on five battle in this this case. Repeating cross, a steel crossbow. They didn't test this very well. Steel crossbow in a past test has had a range of about I want to say about 70, 70 yards um, this one seemed like it was a little bit older so it wasn't as good so I'm going to give it a range a benefit of 50 yards repeating crossbow did not have that much of a range maybe 25 yards at the most and the thing is none of these um, bow and arrow or none of these arrows could really penetrate the other one's armor um, the <clears throat> Um, bow from Sun Tzu 
penetrated, really didn't penetrate the armor of Vlad the Impaler, and um, <clears throat> still crossbow could not penetrate the armor of Sun Tzu. It bounced right off of it. So these are things that you got to factor in, and these guys didn't get a lot of kills in the simulation, but I think they gave them less kills. There's nothing to prove they can, they can get a kill unless you hit them in the face. And you got one has a shield and one doesn't, so I'll give the advantage of that to Vlad the Impaler. However, they still had them winning. Um, the Killage got the most kills in the simulation with 337. I think that's about accurate. It's, it's a very effective weapon. Um, I wish they'd have tested this against the armor, okay? Um... Because it is a slashing weapon, and I know the leather would prevent the slash. However, the killage is a heavy, heavy weapon. But the biggest one I think would actually be the game changer is the halberd. Halberd can stab, slash, um, chop. Um, it has a piked end. It has everything. So I think that would be the biggest game changer. That in the hand cannon. The hand cannon is a firearm. It was pretty accurate. Um, Really don't have much else to say. Um, Shun Tzu had a sword. It was it was a straight sword called the Jian, and wasn't I, I don't see how that's effective against chainmail. You can't slash with it. You, they have chainmail. You cannot slash with it. So they get 234 kills out of that. You're not going to get that many kills. You might be able to stab with it, but you just lost half the capability of your weapon because you can't slash. You can only stab. So now you're basically down to being a fencer. It's basically what you are. Okay. Um, the Kuha, it's like a big giant heavy pole arm. It's it's pole arm. It's effective. It's heavy. But it literally only has blunt force trauma. And it's heavy. And you have to spin and turn your back to the enemy to keep using it consistently. Okay. It's too heavy. It would be ineffective against the Halliburton. It only got 37 kills in, in the simulation. Makes sense to me. Repeating crossbow. I give it a little bit more of an uh, edge than than what it sounds because if they have a Halliburton there's nothing to protect their face if you can shoot them in the face that they are it is going to be effective uh, they have the hand cannon same thing but the hand cannon had a range effective range of 30 yards um, and flaming arrows <clears throat> if you're talking about a massive war I give you the give you that the flaming arrow can be more effective but there's nothing that a flaming arrow cannot kill a person unless you hit him like in the jugular or in the face it has to light stuff on fire around them and it doesn't ignite as fast as they say it does on the video, they don't like ignite as fast. You have time to get out of it. Okay, so they still got it got it right. I just think some things are going to be a little different, but I still believe that they got the 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 victor is is correct. Um, I just wish they test the armor. That's one of my biggest things: test the armor, test the armor. For God's sakes, test the armor. Um, because people think they can watch this show and think think that oh, it said so in this show, so therefore it's it's reality. It's it's not. Um, Ming Warrior versus French, the French Musketeers. French Musketeers win this 674 to 323, 26. I think it's about accurate. Um, really, it's, it's accurate on the win, but I think it's a lot more kill heavy towards the French Musketeers. And here's why. Because the French Musketeer has a steel cuirass. If you don't know what that is, it is uh, steel, a plated steel, and it's rounded, kind of like if you've ever seen like a conquistador, it's rounded like that. Bullets couldn't penetrate this. Um, musket bullets couldn't penetrate it back in the day. They had a weapon called the three-barrel pole gun. Okay, it actually fires three times. Could not penetrate it. Nest of bees <clears throat> is a big old thing of about 20-some arrows. If your gun can't penetrate it, what what makes you think that's going to penetrate? Yes, you can hit their face, but that's it's and, and they they fired this at like a whole group of people, and like three out of like twenty something or thirty hit. It's not an accurate weapon. You, you're going to get lucky. And you're going to spray and pray. Is basically what you're doing. Mechanical landmine is the most effective weapon for the Ming warrior, and the only reason it is is because it causes a concussion blast, and it 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 basically on the explosion. It has shrap metal, and it has a pressure wave. Now they actually started testing pressure waves this season, so I'm good. About, I'm happy about that. They started pre testing pressure waves properly. It is effective. However, the issue I have with this is it's a passive weapon. It's a passive weapon, so you have no control of whether the, the enemy even goes and uses it. And the French had a have a, have a grenade, and the grenade um. A grenade only had 26 kills. I think it would get a lot more because it's a mobile explosive device. Um, they tested in a bad scenario, threw it into a cart, 
and the cart, because the way the cart was designed, and the way the grenade sat, it pressure waved one way and didn't even kill the other guy. It's not going to be realistic. You're, if you're in a battle, you're going to throw it between the two and let it explode. Why does the mechanical landmine get the ideal situation to kill, but the grenade doesn't when they test? It, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, but I do, it, and I don't think one of their weapons is effective at all. The Dow, it's a sword. It is a very nice sword. I'm not taking that away. It's a nice sword. However, you cannot penetrate the armor. So your area in which you believe you can kill that you're trying to kill is here. That's it. It goes all the way from here to here. It goes all the way around. Unless they lift up and let you stab them right there. There's nothing you can do about that. The main gauche in, in rapier dagger, or yeah, main gauche and rapier, or the rapier and main gauche dagger, let me rephrase that, um, are going to leather lamellar armor. Now leather, um, the, the rapier cannot penetrate their armor either. However, the wheel lock pistol can shoot through it. The flintlock musket can shoot through it. A grenade can definitely do a concussion blast through it. Um, the main ghost can stab through it, but the rapier is will, will, won't go through the throat, but that's your part of your technique is the thrusting through the throat. The dowel can't slash through the steel cuirass. It can't stab through. It can only cut your head off. That's basically what it can only do. So a lot of the weapons of the Ming, Ming warrior are rendered ineffective, and the only one that is anywhere near effective is a mechanical landmine because it is passive and it is a concussion blast. I do agree with the end result that the French would win. I do think it'd be a little bit more decisive, um, just because that armor is is there's there's a reason why that armor is so effective. Okay, um, and in the last one of season two that I will agree with the results of the overall results of them winning is the Comanche. Um, Comanche, um, every weapon except one, um, had over 150 kills. Uh, it, this was a close battle. It, it was about, it's about as uh, much as I thought. However, the flayed mace, which is a heavy weapon, you're fighting a fast warrior. I don't think that weapon's going to be that effective. Especially on horseback. On horseback. Um, I've always said that you have to have more, bring more to the plate, to the, uh, bring more to the fight rather than, uh, oh, we'll fast and we'll dodge. I'm like, no, you have to have a, a shield. You have to have this. You have to have that. And they didn't really um, have show the ability of that weapon to be used on horseback. And that's mainly what these two warriors were. They're both um, horseback warriors. That's basically what the best way to put it. The Warhawk was a spiked hawk, or spiked, um, it's basically like this big, spike on the end. It's effective. I don't remember if they put it test against armor or not. I think they did. It did, te it did penetrate the Lamar armor, the uh, War Lance penetrated the armor too, the bow and arrow would penetrate armor, and I don't think the scalp, scalping enough was pointless, and so was the, uh, they had a weapon called the Iliad, whatever that is, uh, the Iliad, um, I'm, look, I'm looking over it right now just to be safe, just give me one second, I'm just checking, just give me one second, I think the Iliad was some kind of sword, yeah, it was a sword. Yeah, the Iliad was the sword. Okay. So I'm just making sure. Um, I have my computer up right here so I can look at it. So, okay. So the, the Comanche had 152 kills with the Warhawk. That sounds about accurate to me. Warlance, 168 kills. Sounds about accurate to me. And then the Bow and Arrow got 205 kills. I think they could get a little bit more, but they still got three a handful of kills out of it. The Mongols got... 111 kills out of a, the flanged mace. You have to get close to your opponent to use that. Um, now again, I always say that you have to dictate the fight based on what you can carry into battle at one time. Um, the Warhawk and the War Lance, you can carry both of them probably at the same time. The Bow and Arrow. I would say Bow and Arrow and War Lance are your two main weapons and the Warhawk is your constant. When it comes to the Mongol... Dang, the glaive. I mean, they have three different weapons here. That I think the the Illid, which is a which is a sword, is a cons is a con is a constant, and all three of the other weapons are broken down. That's how that's how I see it. You can't carry all of them. In, this is not Duke Nukem. You can't carry all your weapons in at once. So you got to factor in that you can only carry a couple combinations of weapons. You can't carry the flames mace, which is like a, like freaking ten pounds of weight hanging on you. Followed by a greave, the glee, the glaive, which is a long. It's kind of like a um, nagina. It's a, it's a, it's a spear, is basically what it is. 
It's not used from horseback, though. It's used to take people off a horseback, the bow and arrow, and then the uh, Iliowitz is a sword. So, I do think they got this about right. I don't think the Flames Mace gets that many kills. The only, th the only way I see that possible is if you come up against the Comanche with the Scalping Knife. Which I think a scalping knife could be a constant as well. Con that and the Warhawk could always be a constant. You can put those right on your belt. And then a War Lance or Bow. So you're factoring all that in. If he's carrying the Flames Mace, you're, you're, you're going to walk into battle and get yourself killed. Because they're going to have a Bow and Arrow or a War Lance. And you're not going to get close. So I do think the, the, result, the, the victor is accurate. I don't think that the, the kills would be that close. Flames Mace I think is a pointless weapon. Because you're not going to get close enough to your opponent. Uh, opponent to use that. You're not getting close enough. If, if you have a bow and arrow, they have a bow and arrow and a lance. There are two main weapons and then the other two weapons are always a constant. You can have a scalping knife. You can literally put a scalping knife in your pocket. It's not that big. It, it, it's made to cut off someone's scalp so it's not a huge weapon that you have to carry. The warhawk can be held right on your hip and then you have either the war lance or you have a bow and arrow. Okay? Not to mention the war lance. You're on a horse. You're not using a flange, flange mace on a horse. You're not. You're not using it. It's too heavy. It's too... It's going to have too much momentum. You want something that's a lot... You, you use the momentum of the horse with it. So, which is what the War Lance does and the Warhawk can both do. Okay? Um, so that's it on, on what I believe they got right in Season 2. They didn't get a lot wrong, um, but they did have two wrong, and I'm going to go over that. Um, in the next video, I'll comment on this too real quick. Nazi, Nazis, on, Nazis versus uh, Viet Cong. Nazis win. That sounds accurate to me as well. Nazis were basically a force made... Um, they, they're a violent force. It's no other way to put it. They, they were one of the most effective armies in the history of the world. They fought for a horrible cause, don't get me wrong, but they were one of the most effective armies ever assembled. Um, they had conquered Russia pretty fast. They conquered a lot. A lot of the conquerings they did, they conquered very fast. Um, if you ever, if you, there's a video on YouTube, I'm going to throw a shout out to this. Um, just look up deaths, World War II deaths by the numbers or something like that. It'll show you a lot of stuff that they that I didn't know until I watched it, and I was just really astounded. You, them, if you're American, you really have an appreciation for Russia because they gave up a lot of people to to stop the Germans that w could have been Americans and Allied forces. So um, that's the end of this video. The next video will be I'm going to just give you a heads up. Next video will be oh, I missed one. Uh, Aztec Jaguar versus Zongi Warrior. Zongi Warrior wins. I agree with Zong that Zongi Warrior wins. I'm not going to get too much into it. They win. I agree with that. They should win. You have Iron Age weapons against people who are using Obsidian. Obsidian is sharp, but um, in a handful of the tests, like one of them was the Obsidian, uh, basically the Obsidian Chainsaw. It's, it's called something else. I don't know what it's called. But basically, it half the, half the blades, half the Obsidian, came out of the weapon in the first test. That's not going to be effective in a war. Okay, it's gonna, You're going to lose half your weapon. So if you're in a 5 on 5 battle, you could lose half your weapon. You didn't even test that against like armor or anything. Hit a shield or something. It could literally take half that stuff off. So Zongay Warrior wins, and they have one of the coolest weapons. Was, I think it's called a Kapinga. It's a throwing, it's kind of like a boomerang, but it has like spikes on it. Um, so that's one of the coolest weapons. So those, those are the two that I like the most out of this season. Um, those are the ones I think are most accurate. Um, the, the one I will do is Attila the Hun versus Alexander the Great. Um, that's my next episode. That'll be episode eight. Appreciate you watching. Um, see ya. Have a good one.